History, history, not history, not history, not history, 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 it will never, it will never, it will never, it will never, because I was not yet free, I was not yet free, there may be one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, a beautiful sun, a beautiful sun, a beautiful sun, but that day, but that day, but that day, not yet, not yet, not yet, there's nothing worse than a mess and having to clean it, but of course if you have the proper supplies, it makes it easy, one of these supplies is a squeegee. And normally we've seen these applied to windows and the idea of, you know, making something look a certain way, giving that potential illusion that everything is always fresh and clean, which is not. And the same can be said for racism and how there's a lot of erasure and this constant sense of trying to forget the past. And JID is not one to let the past just simply be the past because it is continuing to happen it's continuing to repeat itself and as long as it does it can't be ignored on skiji which is jid's sort of i want to say format to say the word squeegee instead of skiji he is combating these forms of racism but it's interesting because it starts off with this sort of simple advice of, hey, what's the tools that you would need for success? If you were to ask JID, the tools that you need for success are simply the body parts you have and the brain you got. And most important is this idea to listen, to be keenly aware of the things going on and to not speak over those who may offer advice, which is pretty cool given the fact that he samples, I'm pretty certain, very important person of which I did not look up, but I will, so I'll have it here. But he samples this guy who's sort of talking about how he got into politics and then he talks about these inhumane experiments that were happening to black folks. There's so many other different forms of torture and um, degeneracy that was applied to African Americans. And what JID does is he talks about the fact that, yeah, it was cool I got recruited for football and stuff, but like, honestly, I felt like more uncomfortable with them being around I felt better after they left and that idea of having to work for the white man which is something else he continues to point out but before this he talks about how his dad sort of helped him out by telling him the stories of how instead of just shooting them up you know they were shot up with syphilis and tested on in this very horrible way so it's not just simply, oh yeah, black people just were enslaved and then things were fine. It's never that. It's always more and more, you know, and this idea of having to survive in a world that constantly tells you you're horrible, you're a thug, you're this, you're that, you're, you're always put down in a certain way. And then those stereotypes evolve to become fatal and destructive. He talks about the fact that the same people who sort of create this voter suppression and other formats to keep black people from voting and being able to actually change anything for themselves policy-wise are also the same people who are willing to hang these people from nooses. It's just evolved. Racism never went away. It just shifted over time to become something that was a little more polite, a little more palatable. So to even suggest that it is gone, to even say something along those lines one the audacity two the audacity how dare you and it's another another cool thing he talks about too is how one of the things that black folks have to are, are trying to overcome is all this all this this racist trash thrown upon them and sometimes the the helpers of the demons are like alcohol and drugs and people are so quick to be so judgmental of of anyone who struggles with that but especially African Americans like oh yeah you're just more prone to drink because you're black it's like again there are so many other factors that have to be considered when talking about this that people don't consider but I like how ultimately one of my favorite parts of the song is how he sort of talks about I, I got my dick out i'm like for emancipation and and he's basically what he's doing he's connecting that imagery of slavery and then modernizing it by talking about 
Well, even though I keep saying this, and I'm tired of talking about it, and, you know, we don't get a break, and we want reparations, I don't think anything's going to get done. And on top of that, I literally, I'm usually getting funded by the white man. So, imagine that you are trying to combat the very discrimination that constantly is belittling your own life and the many lives of others and and potentially putting you in a lot of danger you can't even make a stand like if you got to make a stand you have to consider all this money that you can't have and because money is the only thing that has a somewhat like eternal value at the time like right now but this this again capitalism is also racist so you have you have to consider all these things before you can speak out about the sort of injustices that are done against you. And so now it's like, instead of having these people be able to speak up, you get, you get ripped away from that. I'm, I'm immediately, I'm immediately drawn to the, uh, to the, um, to how everything happened that, um, uh, the previous summer when, when the Black Lives Matter movement picked up steam and there were protests like almost every day. And it was interesting because I think one of the biggest reasons was that not everybody was at work anymore. And so when you're not at work and you're not having to survive constantly because you're getting a check and you're able to just have more freedom, you can talk about these things, even though it doesn't matter because Colin Kaepernick got blacklisted too. He also was someone who ran into these Ran, who ran into the buzzsaw of, well, is it money that I want? Or do I want people to not have to, you know, do I want black people to not have to get discriminated against constantly? And by calling it out on his own platform, it it unfortunately upended his football career or at least left him blacklisted. So you have to think about all of this before you can even make a stand. And it's just, it's so messed up. But I really do like how JID flips the idea of sports because a lot of the time people think about sports as this sort of avenue because there's so much money again capitalism is racism capitalism is, capitalism is racist there's so much money that these athletes make it's insane and of course they do wonderful things Russell Westbrook just recently open up his own little, I think it's sort of supposed to be an education center. So a school, LeBron did a, a school before. I want to say there's there's other players that are doing things with this money. But, you know, it shouldn't have to stand on the back of, like, like people's livelihoods should not have to stand on the back of someone else choosing to be a philanthropist as opposed to having that own opportunity. And so, well, I, like I said, I like JID's, sort of intro where he talks about just two hands, two eyes, one mouth, and you gotta listen. I love that part, but I love it even more when he talks about you could make all these J's, you could make all these J's, and you still wouldn't be Jordan, and you could run like like going 100, 100 yards, and you still be 40 acres off. That was the coldest way to end it. It was so good, because it's like, it's it's a perfect just like, yeah, you can be as rich as you want. You can do whatever you want. You can be as successful as you want. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. As long as the color of your skin is what it is, you will always be discriminated against and you in danger because there are people who want to judge you by that skin. And in, in J.I.D. literally says this at one point. He's like, do, do it, doing all this just because we're different. Just because we're different. Like, let niggas live. Let niggas live. I feel like that's literally the main crux of this, this feeling that comes out. And this beat, so cold. So cold, man. I, I just, this whole song is just, mm, it, as far as, like, talking about racism and talking about his own experiences, trying to grow up in that world and, being more keen of like what that means as like as far as his success goes where he is where he stands and just the general macrocosm of how racism has so many different entrenchment entrenchments that force so many more messed up things to happen it's not just blatant racism that has to be 
like destroyed. It has to be from all the different angles that are used. And when there's so many different points of attack, it makes it difficult to really breathe. And so you get this sort of sense of apathy, not from the song, but you get this sense of apathy in general. It's like, well, if I'm good, I don't really got to worry about it. And as long as the people around me are surviving, I don't got to worry about it. Because, you know, one person can't save the world. It takes collective action and collective understanding. And, oh man, that's a... That's a big, it's a big ask. And I just, pff, dog, this song is just, is J.I.D.'s flow is hard. This beat is hard. I, I'm, I'm enthralled. I'm just like, I'm like, bro, yes, you're saying the things. You're saying, he's saying it, he's rhyming it, he's doing it. And the beat kills it all together. This song is just powerful. It's not like make you cry powerful. It's like more like this is the anthem you listen to when you go to a protest or something. Like this is the stuff where you're like, like you f you feel a little bit extra. I feel like I feel like as as a black man, I feel this one a bit extra, a bit more. And it sucks because it's like I understand this, which is another thing he even mentions in the song. It's like yeah, we're tired of this. This happens all the time. Let it stop happening, but it doesn't. It's this whole song is just <clears throat> it's really good. It's really good. Is hard. JID is just in his bag. He's just in his bag. Like if he feels like talking about something, I'm going to listen. Because he just he just he just every time. Just nails it every time. So keep it up, JID. I'm a I'm a huge fan. If <laughs> that isn't obvious. Combating racism should be done every day. Eradicating it should be done every day. It shouldn't be a consider a considered thing it shouldn't be something that people act like doesn't exist just because oh well i live in a nice neighborhood like the history of america is not squeaky clean as the convenient history books like to put it because you know history is written by the winner they're not clean but if you want the future to be clean then you should apply the knowledge of the history that's been happening and actually change it via policy I'm not really confident in that but I'm not confident in the current people in power but black people been saying this we've been saying this we've been seeing this we've been tired of it it's not shocking it's just exhausting so yeah ski d j-i-d well this guy says it's hard to keep a lot of things clean and maintained, but it's easier when it's new. It just is. I mean, if you, as long as you keep it in a box and stuff, you know, just, just box it.